what's happening right now from RTV6, the Indie Channel. And right now at 5.30, a big hunting and capping department store is taking a step to keep your kids safe around firearms. Here in central Indiana, we have seen more and more cases of children getting their hands on unlocked guns with deadly results. So this weekend, retail giant Gander Mountain is trying to help. They're giving away trigger locks to promote gun safety. Responsible gun ownership, that's what this uh, initiative is all about. And Gander Mountain's goal is to give away 50,000 of these this weekend nationwide. Trigger locks that will secure your firearm. It's painfully simple. I mean, it literally takes two to three seconds to put the trigger lock on a gun. It'll work on any gun. As a company, we feel responsible to promote firearm safety and, and uh, take care of our customers the best we can. Customers like this man who came to the Greenwood store early today, he says he makes sure to lock all of his firearms to keep his children and grandchildren safe. People leave guns laying around for home protection, but they don't realize that kids can get to them, you know, and they, and they don't, they think they're toys. And that may be what happened last month in Greensburg when a six-year-old accidentally shot and killed his 13-year-old brother. Gander Mountain launched its firearm responsibility call last April. Anyone who goes to a store this weekend can get a free trigger lock, but first, you must sign a pledge to properly safeguard all of your firearms. Basically, anybody can come in, sign the pledge saying that I will uh, uh, secure my firearms, keep them out of the hands of uh, the underage, untrained, and uh, unauthorized, and uh, we give them a free trigger lock. Now, Gander Mountain says they're expecting huge crowds at all the area locations this weekend, so you might want to get there early. New developments. A Bartholomew County man has pleaded guilty but mentally ill. The charges that he slashed his female roommate's throat. 36-year-old Ryan Klug admitted during a court hearing that he killed 26-year-old Adobe Obai last November in their Columbus apartment. Klug then fled to Texas. The victim was found two days later. Clug told a psychiatrist he was obeying a television message to kill her. He faces up to 65 years in prison. The prosecutor says he will receive psychiatric treatment while in prison. 46 years ago today, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was killed in Tennessee. It was also that day in 1968 that another historic American brought the city of Indianapolis together. And happening right now, that moment is being remembered at a community center near Martin Luther King Jr. Park at 17th and Broadway. It's the same area where then-presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy informed the crowd that Dr. King had been assassinated in Memphis. Kennedy's words that night were credited with keeping Indianapolis from erupting into violence, which happened in several other American cities. The theme of this year's event is making the dream a reality. Among the issues being addressed, health, housing, education, and economic development. The event ends at 6.30. All right, taking a live look right now from Monument Circle as Friday evening settling in. Before you get ready to head out tonight, you're going to want to know just how much you should be bundling up. So we're going to check in right now with Storm Team 6 meteorologist Todd Clausen, who says... It's going to be chilly. Yeah, it's going to be chilly and it's going to be windy, Drew. You saw the camera there shaking. We have wind gusts right now that are over 30 miles per hour in spots. The one thing you will not have to encounter for a change, any rain. Truvy radar is completely quiet right now. All the rain has moved off to the east. Temperatures right now are in the 40s to the north, down to the south. We're at 49 degrees, but it does not nearly feel that warm because here is why these winds are out of the west. And these are sustained wind speeds, anywhere from about 22 to 30 miles per hour. Gusts are over over 30 miles per hour, and that's why a wind advisory remains in effect until 8 p.m. this evening for almost all of central Indiana. It's once we get past midnight that we'll start to see the uh, winds subside a little bit and calmer weather start to work its way in. Now, the clouds are firmly in place. If you're heading out this evening, just plan on the cloud cover. It is not going to be changing throughout the course of the evening. It's probably not until the overnight hours that we'll start to thin the clouds out. Notice the temperature trend this evening as well. We will continue to fall down about 35 degrees by 11 o'clock. We wake to sub-freezing temperatures tomorrow morning, but it actually does turn into a nice weekend. We'll talk more about that for you coming up in just a few minutes. New information about a body found this week at a Kokomo trash dump. We now know the man's identity. He is 63-year-old Elvin Miracle of Bunker Hill, Indiana. Workers spotted his body yesterday morning at Kokomo's trash transfer station where city garbage trucks dump out their loads. Detectives are now tracing the truck routes to determine how Miracle ended up in a trash container. 
Right now, the clock is ticking in the search for Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. The batteries on those black boxes are only supposed to last for 30 days, and time runs out on Sunday. The black boxes give off pings that can be detected by the high-tech equipment on these ships. Searchers are hoping they can get there in time before the final ticks. Two ships are dragging sophisticated ping locators along a 150-mile route through the deep waters of the Indian Ocean. Four weeks after the plane disappeared, not a single piece of wreckage has been found. Day by day, the Australian Transport Safety Bureau continues to refine the area where the aircraft may have entered the water. Based on continuing groundbreaking and multidisciplinary technical analysis of the satellite communications and aircraft performance passed from the International Air Crash Investigative Team. Now, finding the wreckage after the data recorders stop giving off pings is possible, but it's going to be very, very difficult. Coming soon, new details about the CIA's controversial interrogation program. Now, the Senate Intelligence Committee has voted to release parts of a classified report, one expected to be harshly critical of the spy agency and what it did to terror suspects after 9-11. ABC News' Karen Travers has more from Washington. It was a secretive and controversial program, but soon Americans will know more about the CIA's so-called enhanced interrogation techniques. The report exposes brutality that stands in stark contrast to our values as a nation. The Senate Intelligence Committee voted 11 to 3 to release parts of its investigation into the CIA's use of waterboarding and other harsh techniques. It's expected to be highly critical. It is now abundantly clear that in an effort to prevent further terrorist attacks after 9-11 and bring those responsible to justice, the CIA did make some serious mistakes and that they haunt us to this day. The 6,200-page report has been in the works for years, and the Intelligence Committee and the CIA have been at odds for most of them. Feinstein accused the CIA of illegally searching computers used by lawmakers as they investigated the torture allegations. The CIA denied any snooping. Senator Saxby Chambliss, the top Republican on the committee, said he thought the committee's report was a waste of time but he voted for its release. He said the tactics used by the CIA worked. There was information gleaned from this program which led not only to the takedown of bin Laden, but to the interruption and disruption of other terrorist plots over a period of years. The Senate Intelligence Committee is expected to declassify about 500 of the report's 6,200 pages. That should take several weeks. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. New tonight, a federal judge says he will strike down Ohio's voter-approved ban on gay marriage. Now that means the state must recognize marriages of gay couples who legally wed elsewhere. Judge Timothy Black made the statement following final arguments in a lawsuit that challenged the constitutionality of the marriage ban. His ruling will not mean Ohio has to allow couples to marry in the state. Well, tonight, parents at an elementary school in Davenport, Iowa, are outraged. And you'll understand why when you hear this. They received letters from the school telling them that a custodian found three video cameras in two stalls of the girls' bathroom. The man accused of placing those cameras, the after-school program coordinator. The same man who just last month shared a laugh with students by getting pied in the face as part of a school-wide reading challenge. I would like to know how they even got the cameras in there. I mean, that's, I mean, that's my daughter in there. You know, God knows if she's actually on there. That is scary because you think you're sending them to, you know, a safe place. Police have accused 29-year-old Deshaun Isabel of invading those students' privacy. They're now working to determine just how many victims there actually are. After a bit of a winter hibernation, the U.S. job market is waking up this spring. The Bureau of Labor Statistics says 192,000 jobs were added to payrolls last month. Those job gains came entirely from the private sector. That means non-government employment is back to its peak before the financial crisis. The unemployment rate remained unchanged at 6.7%. 
His decision to retire is throwing the late night scene into a frenzy. Certainly is when Indiana native David Letterman could be stepping down and what kind of legacy he's leaving behind. And there are dozens of health warnings out there for cigarettes, but doctors say the habit could also affect your waistline. What you need to know before lighting up. We also have important warning for anyone heading to college or parents of college students what free service you could take advantage of that many families end up paying money for.